Hello, welcome. This uh, short video outlines a brief uh, Porter's Five Forces analysis of Quebec's political system in uh, September 2022. So, first of all, we'll look at the uh, macro environmental forces that impact on the model, and of course, the context of the Russian invasion into Ukraine, uh, the COVID pandemic have major influences on both the political system and the population at the moment. There's also Brexit, which occurred a few uh, months ago, and the, the announcement by Scotland that there will be a referendum or proposing a referendum next year. There's a move to the political right in Europe, uh, exemplified by the election in Italy yesterday. And also there's trends in general towards populism amongst uh, governments and politicians around the world. In the social demographic environment, there's certain cynicism among the population around government and politicians and not, and not really doing what they promised. Um, there's certainly uh, a big dependence on social media, on alternate truth, on fake news, which is all a rea reality of how people's uh, opinions are shaped these days. There was the incident in Canada of the truck convoy, which saw people coming from across Canada united in, in um, Ottawa as a, as a sign of dissatisfaction with the political decisions and the political system. There's the long-term concern of the future of French in Quebec, concentration of immigrants, uh, very high in Montreal versus the more rural areas, increasing environmental awareness and concerns amongst the population in general. And at the moment, there's a relatively low level of interest in Quebec independence movement amongst young people. The political and legal environment has certainly changed recently with the death of Queen Elizabeth II and the essential to the throne of Charles III. And there was also recently the refusal to participate in a debate in English by the Premier and the PQ, which is unusual in, in the political realm in recent elections. Um, there was the January 6, 2021 events in the US Capitol, which obviously has, has influenced how people view politicians and the legitimacy of, ref, of elections, et cetera. Um, there's the first past the post electoral system that currently exists. There was uh, Prime Minister Trudeau's dismissal of um, any real investigation of proportional representation, having promised it in, in, in his campaign in, in his first election. There's the kind of discrepancy between, you know, environmental issues, uh, global warming or long term environmental issues, whereas the short term electoral cycle on which uh, politicians are measured tend to be four or five years. Um, once elected, there's few free votes allowed in Parliament and very strong party whips. And there's a, there's a disproportionate rural urban voting power in the province of Quebec and in, in, in many areas of Canada as well. The use of divisive wedge issues by, uh, enabled partly by social media and being able to really target um, through, through technology uh, who potentially the swing voters are. And there's no legal requirement to vote. So customers do not have to buy the product that is for sale. The macro environmental uh, issues at the moment, there's obviously an economic slowdown and some would say recession. And there's powerful lobbying by major industry players in the, in the government arena on a continual basis through associations, etc. The environment, as I mentioned, um, there's a lot of increasing interest, but there's also major storms, uh, flooding, drought, incidents around the environment, weather changes, patterns are, are, are very different these days with more erratic highs and lows. And in Quebec, the, the, talked about the, the lobbying, there's 89 companies, uh, who are, many of whom are major polluters, who have been given exemptions from regulations, which recently came to the surface, which also um, kind of magnifies, put an emphasis on the cynicism around uh, government and parliament and the way it functions. Uh, the technology environment, um, obviously rise of targeted social media campaigns I just uh, mentioned with big data, trolling has become something of, of politicians, uh, their wives, which you've seen recently out in Alberta. And 
So all these forces have had a major impact on the, the customer. Um, 66% participation buying rates, in a sense, they go to vote, which means a third of the population. Um, and it, that's down a little bit from highs of 75 or 80, but that's, re, you could argue, plus or minus 5% is reasonably uh, stable. There's really three key factors on whether you probably go out and vote is, is your belief in the electoral system. Um, there's the strength of the local candidate for whom you might vote. Or there's the sharing of the political ideology or support of the, the leader and the, the party platform. In actual fact, being one person amongst 8.5 million, you have very low voter power, uh, customer power in, in Porter's model. Um, whereas industrial big business customers do have significant power. They can drive, they do drive economic growth. And the threat there gives them power that if they have to conform to environmental regulations, they will close down or they'll move somewhere else, et cetera, et cetera. So certainly business as a customer has more power than the, the, the individual themselves. Supplier power, which is around candidates, there's a low number of interested individuals who are attracted to a, a life of politics. To get into the game, you have to have close links to the, the local current party leadership to get the nomination, basically. And to do so, your candidates must be willing to adhere to party lines. Um, and gaining the party nomination is key, right? Because you can be living in a riding with 30,000 people or more. And if you can become the candidate, all of a sudden that's narrowed down to, you may have a, an opportunity of one in five. So the triage, a lot of the triage takes place in a very not undemocratic way. And once you are elected um, in parliament, the, uh, there's a very attractive salary and pension package, particularly if you stay for longer than one term. Reality is in terms of potential competitors and setting up new parties for the current system, it's quite low in Quebec. So, and we have seen an increasing number of, you know, spin outs from the major parties, um, dissatisfied uh, party members going off and setting up their own parties or just new startups. It's not that difficult to do. Um, the political industry in general, um, traditionally there were, the vote in Quebec was amongst federalist and sovereignty lines. And that's really changed with the, the lack of interest in, in uh, the issue at the, at the moment. And now we tend to have a, um, particularly judging by this current election, we've got five candidates offering various attractive populist type packages loosely aligned with or quite sometimes strongly aligned with their party ideology. Um, but basically what we're trying to do as, a, as an industry is what's in the best interest of all the parties to maintain the status quo, not let new substitutes in, i.e. new methods, methods of democracy, because the, the status quo as such, the oligopoly that exists is actually very useful and it's it's the game that any political party has to win